Tabora for years and years. From the time when we first developed interactive whiteboards, he was then on the journey to become the director of schools for the Department of Education. Ralph is a fellow spirit in many ways. You might think that civil servants are very conventional and not risk takers. Ralph left the department to join the real world and take a hands-on job improving global education. Most people, when they see LVQ, perhaps can hardly believe what they see, and they need confirmation from other people before they speak about it. That doesn't apply to everybody here. Not Ralph. Ralph understood immediately the potential as soon as he saw it and came forward with generous support and encouragement. We both want to change the world, don't we, Ralph? Ralph. It's a, it's a real pleasure to be here, and I'm glad so many of you have had a chance to see LBQ before we talk about it, because uh, it's, it's seeing it that, that, that's everything. Thanks for that introduction, Tony. I'll have the video for my mother, please. <laughs> She'd like to see it. Um, I, 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 I share with Tony a real admiration for the team who's been behind this, the, uh, the developers, the, the educators, the, the teachers in, in schools, because you're doing something that's... that's really, really special. In fact, uh, I'd say it's, it's monumental. It, it's, <laughs> it's a dangerous thing. I mean, this has been an interesting place to have an, an event. There's some dangerous things happened here. I think I'm going to do something more dangerous than even Churchill. I'm going to tell a group of northerners that it may be even better than you think it is. That's really dangerous. <laughs> it's... Um, you see, we're on... We're on the point, we've been on the point for a while, of education moving from um, its old models into really embracing new technology. And I, I, there's people in this room, uh, like me, who've probably been dealing with this. How do we use the new technology for, you know, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, a couple over here for 40 years? And, and we are inventing a different way that will work with people and machines. And all the talk around now is of uh, artificial intelligence and, 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 and you know, how, how's that going to work with uh, teachers of the future. And, and the, the, the reason this is monumental is because you have absolutely nailed how to use technology with teachers. You've combined them. And um, I'll just sort of explain a couple of reasons of why. Um, the, the, if, you, if you take this, um, this theatre and you, you shine a light on what's going on, um, the really impressive things for me about um, the learning by questions is that it's, it starts from questions. Uh, there's lots of other people who are doing uh, curated learning resources. Uh, they're doing it in real time. Um, but you've started with questions, and I think that's really powerful. You've started with clusters of questions, which are sequenced and reflect research about how children learn, where they make mistakes, how things come together. And you've done a third thing, which is very clever. You've, you've beta tested it, and you've grown all the models so far by working with teachers in schools. Those three things, I think, have given you a fantastic lead. Now, if you stand back and, and look at it, let's take a spotlight, first of all, on sort of artificial intelligence of the future, and then let's take a, a spotlight on learning of the future. On, on artificial intelligence, uh, my friend Henry here has, has taught me, he's, he's very young, I'm very old, but he's taught me that um, artificial intelligence is not going to change jobs in the future it's going to change tasks. There's a very, very important difference. Because um, 
really the use of technology in our lives is our human choice. And the developers, uh, the, the, the publishers of the future, the creators of solutions in the future, can make a choice that they're going to take artificial intelligence, going to take the technology, uh, the technology, and they're going to fashion it in a way which enables us as humans to achieve more. And that's incredibly powerful, incredibly exciting. Um, that's what we've got to get the technology doing. And when you go in and you see learning by questions in the classroom, and you see the way it is adding to the teacher's work, it's not replacing it, it's sitting alongside it. It's a very, very powerful thing to observe. It's not what I see when I go in and look at a lot of other curated learning resources. Very often they have maybe one pace to them, two paces, three paces. This actually individualizes. And you see the teachers operating with their classes very differently because it's got in that space of backing up the way the teacher works. And I, I know people are going to... You know, say more about this and show you more of this. But that's immensely clever. I, I travel the world these days. I, I benefit from the fact that I can work in schools all over the world. And um, I came across a... Uh, he's Chief Justice. Oh, he has been. He's retired now. He's 96 in India. And uh, he's a beautiful spirit. Um, and uh, we were talking about a group of schools that he, he helps. I'm also on the board of in, in, in India. And uh, he said to me, as I was talking one day about things, he said, I'm not worried about artificial intelligence, Ralph. I'm worried about artificial knowledge. And he said, artificial intelligence is exactly as you say. It gives you the ability to do a task quicker, better. Um, and that's good. People can then do those tasks in combinations with technology to create a better world. Artificial knowledge, fake news that's much more dangerous, because that's about how people, the purpose of people and what they're trying to do. Um, so artificial intelligence is the way, and this system is absolutely about how technology should be used in, in the future. It's about equipping people to do their jobs better. Now I'll link this, the second spotlight is on learning, because the best place to go is um, in 2000, year 2000, the US Congress got a report from a research study that they asked their top um, cognitive scientists to do. Um, it started in about 1998. They got John Bransford and a group of cognitive scientists. And they said, we've had 50 years of cognitive science. It's, it's a brilliant thing. It's on the web. It's called How People Learn. Not how children learn, how people learn. And, and they, they produced this report in the days when America cared about what research said. And, and, and the cognitive scientists said that teaching and learning, when we've looked at it, when we've gone back through everything, we've learned five things. We've learned that teaching and learning is best when you start from what children already know and feel. It's, I call these laws, almost. It's best when it's... Second thing they, they, they said they'd found from all of the, reviewing all of their research was that if you want effective teaching and learning, you must get the children practicing, practicing, practicing with meaningful, meaningful content. So start from where they are, practice, practice, practice. The third thing, organize your material and your ideas in the framework of concepts. So don't just teach the content as if it's sort of independent, it's loose out there in the world. Concepts in, in, in our knowledge bind things together and help us to understand the, the route to understanding. The fourth thing is they said, use organisers. As, as teachers and learners, use organisers. Things which help people to remember something, like a, a bod mass, maybe a way in maths of remembering the order in which you do a sequence of um, brackets, division, multiplication, etc. Or, or even Roy Gabiv, the, uh, the, the colours of the rainbow that linked to you know, a, a battle in, in, in medieval history. Uh, who won it? Was, it? was it York or Lancaster that won the Battle of the Roses? They're organisers. They're, they're, they're things which help. Even the idea of five, there are five laws of learning, if you like, or five things we've learned. These are all ways that teachers use to help you recall things and then to transfer things. Organisers are really clever to use. So... Start from the children, practice, group things in concepts, 
get the use of organisers going, and the last thing is get the children to manage their own learning. And the cognitive scientists, from years and years of really good work, this is before neuroscience, and neuroscience has really just reinforced these messages. That's what good learning is. When I go into a classroom, and I'm as wrapped up in the love and the, the emotion of that classroom and the learning that's going on, there's also that bit of me that's looking for these things. And when I went in the classroom with learning by questions, those five things were there. You've got the starting from where children are, where there's this quick assessment of, of what they already know, and it's being used in the first few questions that they encounter. You've got the, the, the practice, practice, practice in clusters, which children are working through. You've got the concepts. It's organised in cluster sets. It's, it's brilliant. Um, and then you've got organisers and children taking responsibility for their own learning. And the interesting thing I found is that as the teachers have got involved, they've been working with the technology, it does, it's not yet quite bringing those organisers because that's the teacher's job. So the teachers are actually able to concentrate on the tricks that we use to help children remember and the, the, the clever teachers, and one of them sitting here and she knows who she is, have taken this and they've added to it things like learning logs to get the students going back through the questions and thinking about what did I enjoy learning today? What did I learn today? They're taking control of their own learning. They're developing what we call metacognition which means that instead of the danger of these systems is that children get programmed by them and they lose control, they actually, the teachers, are giving it back to them by getting them to comment on their own learning and build that understanding. So it's the first time, literally the first time, I have seen a proper technological solution which hits all those five laws of learning, as I call them. And it's doing it in a way which fits with the artificial intelligence revolution, which says we should be giving help to people on tasks, not jobs, and tasks which empower people to do their jobs better. You happen to be doing it. I was hoping George Osborne might be here. Uh, you happen to be doing it as a northern powerhouse, and it's spreading all over the country, and I love that. But what you're doing is monumental. I'm just really, really proud to be associated with a bit of it. I feel a little bit like the physics professor who goes into uh, an experiment and says, this doesn't just work in, in practice, it also works in theory. It's, um, uh, more power to you, sir. And uh, I, I think we're going to see something really special as, as it creeps out into all these other areas of science, English, and other areas. But uh, many, many congratulations to all of you. Thank you.